Assalamualaikum. Hi everyone. This is chapter 7. I really hope that all of you are doing very well. And this chapter 7, we are going to discuss about regionalism and intergovernmental organization. So before we start our chapter I'd like to give a little bit of a gentle reminder to everyone. Uh, please stay at home. Don't go out uh, unnecessarily. And when you are at home, please uh, let's use all this time to revisit our goals. Uh, what are we going to do next? And also some of our values. Uh, maybe we can have a better values after this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, pandemic ends. And this is also the time for us. We do have plenty of time to explore new knowledge and skills. So this is the introduction uh, for this chapter. First, I would like to explain to everyone, for this chapter, there are seven, uh, seven topics, subtopics. First, we are going to learn about the definition of regionalism. And number two, what is intergovernmental organization or IGOs? Number three, main purposes of IGOs. Number four, types of IGOs. Then we are going to look at three important international intergovernmental organizations, which are number one, United Nations, number two, European Union, and number three, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which is let's learn about the definition of regionalism. And regionalism, uh, the definition of regionalism, it is about political ideology and um, it shapes uh, usually uh, within specific region for example we have europe as a region so they come up with european union we have uh, southeast asia uh, uh, the, the establishment of asean uh, due to certain political ideology in order to have peace and harmony within the asean or southeast asian continent and As I mentioned before, it is um, we would like to separate. I mean, the countries would like to separate in terms of political, and sometimes in terms of in terms of religion. For example, we have uh, OIC. It's for countries with Muslim pop, uh, population, a majority population. We have cultural boundaries. Uh, some based on linguistic region, and some purely on managerial division and um, we need to remember when we talk about regionalism we are talking about how we would like the countries would like to achieve certain goals by developing certain administrative power for example how to develop economy within or among the countries uh, country members by enhancing uh, better facilities and administration in order to ensure economic development and now we go to uh, the main the main topic for this uh, for this uh, for this topic uh, for this uh, chapter which is Uh, what is intergovernmental organization? So IGOs is only for the members are only countries. So the those who can attend the meeting for IGOs meetings are only the government officials or those who has been appointed. By the government to attend the meeting, and first, in order to establish an IGOs IGO, you need to have a treaty. All right, and this treaty treaty involving countries, we also call it convention. Uh, other than treaty, we can also call it uh, in Malay we call it perjanjian antarabangsa. 
okay to work in common goals and interests of the countries then they come up usually is for peace and it's also for economic development and when we have a treaty then igos can be formed it cannot be without treaty igos will never uh, can be formed without a treaty and we need to understand that igo is established due to liberalism approach and i have mentioned and i have taught you about i have shared with you about the types or the perspective of international relations a uh, liberalism is an approach that believes all states prefer cooperation and live in harmony together instead of bonding each other you know uh, in terms of a war base or realism base we go for uh, how to cooperate in the best manner in order to attain the best interest and common interest okay whereby no war to eliminate all forms of war or discrimination and also to to enhance uh, economy and eliminate poverty with mind of all of you that the narratives that we uh, we heard about liberalism in Malaysia it is kind of like a misunderstanding narrative because liberalism the the real meaning of liberalism is the belief that human being can be kind and can cooperate instead of all the time uh, will be in conflict so reality is always can be better if you understand that all human being would want to have a better world so that is actually the real meaning of liberalism so now let's go to four types of igos all right i would like to explain this so that you can know the many types of igos exist in our current political a scenario today number one is worldwide or global organization and this one is generally open to all nations and um, and the most uh, important worldwide organization is United Nations and this United Nation they have a lot of uh, it has a lot of specialized agencies I'm sure you have heard UNICEF, UNESCO, UNIFEM. These, these are all its agency. So it's easy for you to see or, or for you to identify. Um, it is a specialized agency by looking at the first acronym S U N D P U N U N I C E F. You know U N I C E F. You know, those are uh, United Nations specialized agencies. Number two is regional organization. We are going to learn two of it, which are European Union. And this is open to members from a particular region and continent. So for this topic, I'll be, I'll be explaining about European Union. And also Association of Southeast Asian Nations or all of us know it as ASEAN number three we have cultural linguistic ethnic religious and historical organization this one opened uh, open to members based on some culture linguistic ethnic religion and historical link for example Malaysia we are in Commonwealth of Nation uh, organization. This is for those the former color, uh, the colonized victim of uh, British. And we also have uh, we also Malaysia also a member of OIC. Why? Because uh, the mm, majority population in Malaysia is Muslim. Number four, we have the last one, and I think one of the most important organ IGOs 
our economic based organization it is based on economic of course development some are dedicated to free trade uh, and the, the reduction of trade barriers for example WTO the main key is WTO and IFF and others are focused on international development and international cartels for example OPEC this OPEC is a petroleum exporting countries those who have surplus in petroleum and export it IGOs please explore it and get it also from uh, from other sources other than my my slide and another one is what are the four types of IGO provide example to support your answer please explore further about WTO IMF you know or OPEC all this all these IGOs too so now on uh, three important IGOs mainly United Nations European and also ASEAN member ASEAN first United Nations uh, please go to United Nations website okay I'll be exploring it uh, uh, after this so next we go to okay so that is the website so the best uh, the best source for you to explore is through their website okay so this is the united nations website united nation consists of nearly all countries in countries in the world okay you can see the official languages of united nations so we can click on English, welcome. All right, so for us to know about the United Nations, so if you can see here, and uh, now they are focusing on coronavirus because it's a global, it's a global uh, pandemic and and United Nations, as I mentioned after a World War explanation, is established of in, after the World War. And uh, the state members, there are uh, one, if you can see here, 193 uh, member states of United Nations. And the main organ, we have six main organs okay and um, and there's a headquarters in new york we can see the overview uh, founded in 1943 45 consists of 193 member states and the mission of course is a very good mission to ensure the peace and harmony of the country and of course all the standards uh, for example you know you need to study until at least you know how to read and write you need to have certain vaccinations and uh, human rights these are all determined by United Nations okay so member state we are also going to learn about a uh, human rights a treaty human rights treaties are run by uh, united nations okay, these are the countries of course malaysia is also a part of it nearly all those countries uh, that are the member of united nations usually are the sovereign nation okay so the main organs there are six main organs. Number one is General Assembly. Okay, it's about all states come together and and discuss a policy making for United Nations. And every year in September, all UN member will meet at General Assembly Hall in New York. All right. Then we have um, 
and then uh, if in terms of election they have election each year they would elect a president to serve one year term of office so second uh, main organ is security council 